Steve Smith is going to be a stud. We know this. I love him. But what if, and imagine this, what if Jalen Rager lives up to his first round potential? All of a sudden, all of a sudden, you are looking at the youngest, most dynamic wide receiver duo in the National Football League. 18th pick in the NFL draft. The d hey, make us lunch. We're hungry. Dallas still stinks. You're right the way. King Dean back here and hope everybody's hanging in there. Hope you guys are doing well. So in the previous video, we talked a lot about how Devontae Smith is catching everything thrown his way. Everything thrown his way. And, and I'm getting all the comments. Well, he's supposed to catch everything in practice. Well, it's only practice. You can't put a lot of stock in it. Listen, he is catching everything thrown his way. That's what he's supposed to do. He's doing it. That means he's on track. He's right on track where we need him. Come week one versus the Atlanta Falcons, he is going to double moonwalk their ass. You'll see it. I'll see it. The whole world's going to see it. I can't wait. Even that 60-minute, well, he ain't 60-minute, man. He's a 15-second pump and dump, man, is going to see it. That's why he was so pissed off when the Eagles took Devontae Smith. Stud. Total stud. Now, before I start this video, I get into it. Dingbat Nation has invaded TikTok, mother humpers. So make sure if you haven't, click the link in the description and join. Join join my little channel thing over there where we only can talk. We have like 59 seconds to talk real fast like this. Join. You won't be disappointed. Got a lot of stuff coming there. Uh, but thank you to everybody who has so far. Now, we know Devontae Smith is going to be stuck. I love him. You know, we know he's going to be stuck. Like, to me, that's like the surest bet ever. The surest bet ever is Devontae Smith is a stud. I know he's going to be. You can tell by the name. Devontae Smith. Uh, you can tell when guys are going to be good. Devontae Smith. Um, Julio Jones. Um, Jerry Rice. Terrell Owens. Randy Moss. Then you get guys that stink. You know they stink just by their name. J.J. Ortega, Whiteside, stinks. Nelson Stinkler. J uh, who, who else? Uh, what's his face? Todd Stinkston. James Trash. I mean, these guys stink. You can tell by the name. Devontae Smith, stud, stud, stud. You can tell it. it's all in the name. And another name that I think you can mention and say, stud, maybe, perhaps, Jalen Rager. Jalen Rager. That sounds like, kind of like, uh, could go either way, okay? But if, and just think about this for a second, Eagle fans. If Jalen Rager develops into the first round pick that he's supposed to be, if he develops into that guy, and he's a different kind of receiver than Devontae Smith, if he develops into who he's supposed to be, you have two first round picks at wide receiver. When's the last time the Eagles had that kind of dynamic wide receiver grouping? It's been a long, 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 long time. I mean, really long time, okay? But if you get Devontae Smith and Jalen Rager develops, you are going to all of a sudden have the youngest, uh, most dynamic wide receiver duo, young wide receiver duo in the National Football League for years to come, okay? Now, you throw things in like Miles Sanders, uh, Dallas Goddard, okay? Maybe you get a Quez Watkins, a Fogum. Maybe they develop. Uh, dude, this offense is going to be unbelievable. Unbelievable. And Jalen Rager, uh, I was listening to his press conference really carefully today because he had a press conference, right? And, and it was a very interesting press conference. Uh, and some of the things he said, I really liked. I really liked his, his mindset. I liked how, you know, they tried to ask him about his social media engagement and stuff like that. Uh, he kind of, kind of, kind of short answered it, but I don't care about that. That crap doesn't even bother me, okay? I don't care about what he does on social media. For all I care, get rid of your Twitter, and who cares? But I don't mind if certain things bother players. Like, if Rager is bothered by what people say on Twitter, 
and it's used as motivation, it's used to prove people wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. But if it's used to basically destroy his confidence and it affects him and it hurts the way he goes out and plays, then of course I have a problem with it. Uh, it depends what kind of guy he is. How is he built? Is he built like a kind of guy that's going to go out and prove everybody wrong? Or is he built like a guy that's going to allow outside talk to get him down? That's what we don't know about this kid yet, okay? But everything that I'm hearing from him, at least in today's press conference, gave me a lot of hope that he is the kind of guy that uses it as motivation. And if he does that, uh, I think that's a great sign because I love what he said. Uh, they used him a lot. He's been working a lot in the slot. They've been moving him all around. He's not just in the slot. He's on the outside. He's moving all over. They're even taking some snaps. I think some of these guys as backs. Uh, and that's how they should use him. They should use him interchangeably. They should move Devontae Smith all around. They should use, move Rager all around. Uh, get mismatches you want. Keep defensive get defenses guessing. And go to work. And I like the approach. And another thing that I really liked what Jalen Rager said was that when the, the coaches are teaching you something, when they're teaching them how to do something, they explain why they do it, why you have to do it this way, why it's important that you don't do this or you don't do that, or why it's important to do certain things. That is something that was not happening last year. Uh, he even, you know, he was even kind of questioned about that. So somebody asked, so you're saying that that's not something that Doug Peterson and that coaching staff did. And he was kind of like, well, you know, you guys all kind of saw I was at one position pretty much the whole year. Um, and they didn't. I mean, they were really, really bad at developing young talent. But this coaching staff, this coaching staff is teaching these guys how to play, where to play, and the reasons behind why they do what they do. And when you know why you're doing something and what the reasons are, uh, <laughs> you that's half the battle right there. So Rager sounds like he's really buying into this coaching staff. And this isn't just Rager, I mean, this is everybody. I listened to the Avante Maddox uh, presser, uh, same thing. He's buying into what Jonathan Gannon is teaching and what these guys are teaching. Obviously, it seems like to me, from looking from the outside looking in, it seems like a lot of these players, especially a lot of these young guys, were starving to be taught the right way to play. They were being starved for, you know, good coaching staff, somebody to develop them, to use their talent to their best of their ability. They didn't feel like that. Each and every one of these young guys I've heard, even more than Rager, even more than Avanti Maddox, even more than Miles Sanders, even more than Jalen Hurts, every one of these guys kind of said the same thing, you know? Uh, they weren't being developed or utilized the right way. They all felt it. You can, you can sense it by the way they talk about this new coaching staff. That should get you very, very exciting. And uh, very, very excited, I should say. If Rager can develop into that first round talent that he's supposed to be. Now look, I don't think he's going to be what Devontae Smith is. But if he could play uh, you know, a, a good role, be an important player, make some big plays. If he could be that guy, a uh, first-round talent type guy, with Devontae Smith, this offense is going to be explosive as hell. Explosive as hell, and I love it. You know what I mean? Don't come down here when I'm feeling I'm talking love. You know what I mean? So, yes, I'm telling you right now, Devontae Smith, Jalen Rager, if Rager develops, because I know Devontae Smith's going to, but if Rager can develop into that guy that he's supposed to be, you are looking at the youngest, most dynamic wide receiving group in the NFL coming in the next three to five years. It's going to happen because that's the kind of potential these guys have, man. There's a lot of reasons why we should be very, very excited as Eagle fans. Um, always, as I, I'm going to say all year, it's going to go as Jalen Hurts goes. But if that offensive line is good, if they're healthy, if Devontae Smith is doing what I know he should do, if Rager has come back, comes back and has a good year, okay, and he is that first-round talent that we select. I mean, look, we selected Rager the year before in the first round, and people have given up. You don't even talk, People don't even talk about Rager anymore. He's almost an afterthought. He's only going into his second year. He didn't have... Rookie mini camps, OTAs, training camp, preseason. Then he got injured on top of it. 
Why people would write Jalen Rager off to me is crazy. We don't know what he is yet. Maybe he won't be the guy. Maybe he will. I think it could go either way. You say his name, Jalen Rager. Kind of could, could kind of could go either way for me. So I don't know based upon his name. It's kind of in the middle. However, he's only played one year of football, and he didn't play the whole year. He was hurt, and like you said, he didn't have all the previous things. Then he had Doug Peterson and that staff that couldn't develop a young guy to save their life. We can't give up on Rager. We can't just write him off. He should be a very, very good wide receiver for the Eagles this year. He should be explosive. He should make some big plays. And you put him with Devontae Smith. And if it works out, you are going to have an amazing duo of wide receivers for years and years to come. Now, this isn't me just giving you hype. This isn't me just saying uh, this, this, this could happen. This is how it should be. This is me telling you the way it is. This is me telling you the way it is. The Eagles took Jalen Rager in the first round. You don't take a guy in the first round if you don't expect him to be a top-tier talent. He better be. Uh, Devontae Smith, he's there. So if things work out, and look, they got to work out. But if they work out, you are looking at a dynamic duo at wide receiver. That's not mentioning Miles Sanders. That's not mentioning Dallas Goddard. That's not mentioning any of these other receivers that could develop into something. Uh, the future is bright uh, when it comes to our weapons. The future is bright on offense. And I'm very excited about it. And I think a lot of you guys should be too, man. I love it. I love it. You know what I'm saying? I love when people run around upstairs and I make videos and you can hear them stomping. Boom, 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 boom. I love it. I love my wife. You know what I'm saying? So it's all good. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. You know what I'm saying. I love everything, everybody. You know, it is what it is. But Jalen Rager, yes. he Don't give up on him. Don't write him off yet because people are going to be surprised. If this kid can develop and come back, I think he is going to be really, really good. And what are the things that he needs to develop and be that good? I'm going to tell you what it is. He needs a coaching staff that could develop him. Check. He also needs to stay healthy. That's something that he's going to have to do. And if those two things happen, I think Jalen Rager is going to be a lot better than people think. Him, Devontae Smith, it's going to be a scary wide receiving core for years and years to come. They just need to develop. With that said, let me know what you guys think. Take care. Talk to you later. And of course, don't be a dingbat. No, I've been using a green screen lately, and it's not something that I'm going to do long term. Uh, it's it's temporary. I'll use it for some things, but I prefer a real background, a real background. I think those are better. In the meantime, I'm using the green screen, and most of my eagle stuff, a lot of my green stuff, is invisible in the green screen. So I got this hat today, and now I'm wondering if this is going to be uh, invisible. I'm gonna we're gonna find out when I put this video up. Uh, but I have no idea as of making this right now. Then I got this one. Who knows if it's going to show up or not? I have no idea. All I do know is that this is the greatest logo ever. This is the logo the Eagles need to go back to. This is the this is the logo that spit, shine, pizzle he's scared of. This is what he's scared of. And speaking of scared, I want my belt back. I know he's a, he, he calls himself the 60-minute man, but he's really the 15-second pump and dump. Okay, this guy has my belt, my belt, not his belt, my belt, and I want it back. I want it back. You know what I mean? He calls himself 60 Minute Man. Ain't no 60 Minute Man. They say, I'm making babies. Patang, patang, making babies. Patang, patang. Dude, you live in a bayou. You live in the bayou. You got snakes, alligators, mosquitoes, swamp rats. What else do you got to do but make babies? There ain't nothing else to do there. I want my belt back.